Hi. Great to have you here. Can we have you uh, share your screen slides? Sure. It's okay. Okay, wonderful. Just the at the bottom, can you remove the uh, or can you hide that uh, where it says, you know, hide the screen share? Hide. Oh, okay. Just a moment, please. That's it. Yeah. Is it okay? Wonderful. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, take it away, Yashuki. Yes. Yashuki. Thanks. Okay, so hello everyone, thank you for attending this session. My name is Yoshiki Tabata, and I worked at OS Solution Center with Hitachi. And today I'm talking from Japan. Today's session, the title is Towers Certifying Financial Grade API Security Profile with Keycrock. And I describe our activities introducing the puppy security profile and to kick off which is an OSS for identity management. There are many difficulties and I describe how to deal with them. And I also introduce our next plan, which focuses not only on key clock, but also on the whole API system. This presentation slides are available in SlideShare, so please get from there. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Yoshif Tabata, and I'm a software engineer at the OSS Resource Center of Hitachi. I mainly work as a consultant for API systems, and I've built various API systems. For example, a high security banking API system. And I'm, I'm also a contributor to Swisscale, which is an OSS for API management. I developed functions around security and access control. For example, edge limiting, role based access control, OWAS MTRS, and so on. And I'm also a contributor to Keycrock. I developed functions required for API use cases based on OWAS and OIDC. For example, token revocation, refresh token setting per client, and so on. So let's get started. These are today's contents. First, as an, an introduction, I describe FAPI and Keycrock. After that, I introduce client policy and how to satisfy the FAPI security profile easily. Finally, I introduce other activities to help engineers to build a FAPI compliant system. First, introduction, FAPI and Keycrock. So first, what is FAPI? FAPI is hardened standard of OS 2.0 and OpenID Connect and formulated by the OpenID Foundation. As you know, OS 2.0 is a de facto standard to secure API. However, lots are left to implementers, so insecure usage can easily happen. OpenID Connect or OIDC is more hardened than OS 2.0 and it standardizes user verification using ID token. Financial grade API or FAPI is more hardened than OIDC and it standardizes secure usage, usage of OWAS 2.0 and OIDC. It is expected to be used mainly in the financial field. Recently, FAPI's progress is remarkable. This is FAPI's milestone. February 20, 17. The implementer's draft of FAPI Part 1, Read Only API Security Profile, was approved. And July 2017, the implementer's draft of FAPI Part 2, Read and Write API Security Profile, was approved. And October 2018, the second implementer's draft of FAPI Read Only and Read Write were approved and the first implementer's draft of FAPI JOT secured authorization response mode for OS 2.0, called JAM, was approved. And August 2019, the implementer's draft of FAPI grant initiated back channel authentication profile, called SHIBA, was approved. 
and December of this year, all implementers' drafts are planned to be standardized. Standard. As FAPI itself is progressing well, FAPI's need is increasing well. As you know, PSD2 was enacted in November 2015, and following this, the movement of open APIs had become active mainly in EU member states. Among EU member states, the UK read this movement and published open banking standard February, in February 2016. From that time, the UK came to be recognized as a leader in this field. In Japan, in response to the above movements, the Revised Banking Act was enacted in June 2017. Each bank was required, required to make efforts for open API. And from around this time, FAPI is gaining attention both in Japan and globally. For example, OBIE, the Open Banking Implementation Entity, announced its collaboration with the FAPI Working Group in May 2017. And the Japanese Bank Association recommended conforming to FAPI in July 2017. While FAPI was gaining attention, at the same time, some difficulties began to be recognized. For example, to meet the FAPI security profile, it requires various functions and settings for the authorization server. We need to solve these difficulties. So next, what is KeyClock? KeyClock is an OSS for identity management, and its community is led by Red Hat. KeyClock provides single sign-on and authentication and authorization based on OS 2.0. There are three characteristic functions. First, identity federation. Keycloak federates identities based on OpenID Connect, OS 2.0, and SAMO. Second, social login or identity brokering. Keycloak can delegate authentication to external identity providers such as GitHub, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Third, identity management authentication. Keycloak can authenticate users with user storage such as LDAP, Active Directory, and RDB. And Keycloak also can act as an OS2 authorization server. This figure is an orthodox API system. It consists of an authorization server, an API gateway, and a resource server. For example, in the case of the OS2 authorization code grant, first, the authorization server authenticate the end user. After authentication successful, the authorization server issues tokens to the client application, access token, refresh token, and ID token. Then client application requests the API with the access token. Then, the API gateway checks the access token, for example, using token introspection. After the checks pass, the API gateway requests the API of the resource server, then return the response. In this kind of common use case, KeyClock can take on the load of the authorization server. So inevitably, the necessity of implementing FAPI to KeyClock was increasing. Especially, our customers strongly requested FAPI, so we led the activities toward certifying the FAPI security profile. Our colleague, Norimatsu-san, was mainly working on this activity. We had finished implementing all functions required for FAPI read-write. The table shows the part of the list we implemented. Features that have been attracting attention recently were also introduced by our colleague Norimatsu-san. For example, Pixie, as defined by RFC 7636, and Hold of Key, as defined by RFC 8705, were introduced. So we move to the next assignment. The next assignment is passing all conformance tests for FAPI read write. Although We'd finished implementing all functions required for FAPI, it's not enough. To be acknowledged 
for Keycloak's FAPI ability, Keycloak needs to pass all conformance tests for FAPI read-write. However, this is not easy to pass all conformance tests. To pass these tests, it's necessary to implement fine-grained checks to the authorization server. For example, Keycloak needs to be able to check that a client uses request object at a sufficiently high security level. For example, Keycloak needs to be able to check that a client uses suitable response types in OIDC hybrid flow. There are two difficulty, difficulties to implement this kind of fine-grained checks to Keycloak. First, regarding usability. If we implement the fine-grained check logics like the above, we need to provide a way for the administrator to on and off these checks. So settings for clients and realms will increase too much. This is bad for usability. Second, regarding implementation. Implementing check logics to each endpoint will increase conditional branches and impair readability. So solve these difficulties we proposed client policy. So next, I describe client policy and how to satisfy the FAPI security profile easily. So what is client policy? Client policy is a framework for applying security profiles to client applications. There are three important components. First, executor. It defines what action. There are various security profiles all over the world. We specify what check logic we focus on. Second, condition. It defines which client. There are also various kinds of client applications. We specify which client application we target. Third, policy. It manages set of executors and conditions. So the client policy extracts executors and conditions from the policy. And client policy selects client's application based on conditions and execute actions based on executors. Next, the processing flow. The main component is a client policy manager. The client policy manager monitors requests from client applications to each endpoint. There are various endpoints defined by standards. For example, OS2 defines authorization endpoint, token endpoint, token introspection endpoint, token revocation endpoint, and dynamic client registration endpoint. OIDC defines user info endpoint, and there are proprietary endpoints such as logout endpoint and admin REST API endpoints. For each endpoint, there are related requests. The client policy manager monitors these requests and determines if the client is subject to client policies based on the policy definition. The client policy manager determines it by using static characteristics like client application metadata and by using dynamic characteristics like requests to endpoints. Then client policy manager Grant Policy Manager executes actions for security profile. We also put a lot of thought on how to implement the grant policy. Keycloak mainly uses Java, so we implemented all of executor, condition, and policy as Java interfaces. This idea solved the difficulties to implement fine-grained checks for FAPI read-write. First, regarding usability. Since client policies can be set separately from settings for clients and verbs, the settings do not become complicated. Second, regarding implementation. Since client policies can be implemented separately from each endpoint implementation, the readability of the endpoint implementation is not impaired. And this implementation idea provides an additional value, that is, Security profiles other than FAPI, such as UK Open Banking, can be easily added without affecting Keycloak source code. These good points were recognized by the Keycloak community. Then the current policy implementation was merged to Keycloak in May of this year.
After introducing the current policy, then only left is just implementing the fine-grained fine check logic by using the current policy. This activity is also mainly led by us, and our car is not much size, mainly working on it. First, Papi Sigur. Financial Grade API Security Special Interest Group was founded due to our contribution. By using Papi Sigur, we recruited collaborators who implement the fine grained check logic together. This FAPI SIG's main activity is supporting FAPI and its related specification to Keycloak. And its communication channels are Google Group, Zurip, and regular web meetings. Anyone can join anyone can join it anytime, so if you are interested in it, why don't you join us? And the progress of implementation is going very well. This slide shows the progress is 30%, but now it is around 40%. This activity is being accelerated by current policy implementation and FAPI Sigur. So move to the next assignment. The next assignment is considering the whole API system. As you know, the security of the API system is not ensured only by the authorization server, but by whole components, including the client application and the API gateway. That is, considering the whole API system to meet the FAPI security profile, it's not enough that only Keycloak supports the FAPI security profile. So finally, I describe our activities other than the authorization server. We are now considering implementing functions relating to FAPI to the current application and the API gateway, and considering a kind of FAPI sandbox. This FAPI sandbox enables us to try the FAPI functions of Keycloak. This activity is still at the investigation stage, so we have not decided which products to use for the API gateway and the current application. But we started some activities. For example, we developed some functions related to the API gateway for 3Scale, and we created Hitachi's sample OIDC credit application as the current application. I will explain both components. First, what is 3Scale? 3Scale is an OSS for API management, and its community is led by Red Hat. 3Scale provides not only the API gateway, but also the API manager. For example, the developer portal for application developers and the admin portal for administrator. And all components are working on the container platform OpenShift. We implemented some necessary FAPI functions to Swissscale. For example, OS MTS as defined by RFC 8705. In OWASP MTRS, when step two, issuing tokens, tokens includes the hash value of the current certificate of the current application. And the current application requests the API with the access token and with the current certificate. And then the API gateway calculates the hash value of the current certificate and compares it with the hash value in the access token. As you can see, this OS MTRS is not completed only by the authorization server. So we implemented this to Swissscale. We are doing this kind of activity to the API gateway. Next, what is Hitachi's sample OIDC grant application? This was created for the purpose of testing a high security API system we built. To test the high security API system, we need the current application to have the high security function, but there is no good software, so we made it. It follows the OOS 2.0 security best current practice, and it has the following function, including FAPI read write requirements. It acts as a current application of Keycloak, and it supports TRS and OOS 2.0 as defined by RFC 6749 and OIDC. Authorization code grant, scope claim, audience claim, state value, and nonce value are supported. 
And it also supports Pixie as defined by RFC 7636, or MTRS as defined by RFC 8705, and OS 2.0 from post response mode. All these activities for the API gateway and the current application are still at the investigation stage, so they are not su sufficient. However, eventually, we'd like to provide a kind of FAPI sandbox to try the FAPI functions of Keycrop. This is today's session summary. Keycrop has already had all functions required of FAPI read write. And we are actively moving toward passing all conformance tests for FAPI read write with Keycrop. And we are also considering preparing a FAPI sandbox, which is a demo set we can try FAPI with Keycrop easily. Finally, if you are interested in FAPI SIGL, let's join FAPI SIGL. Again, this presentation's slides are available in SlideShare, so please get from there. Thank you for listening. That's all. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Sorry, my computer seemed to freeze for a second there. Uh, I'll click the button. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, a, gra a really great presentation. I love the way that you walked through those various mm -hmm. elements. And then uh, also just, you know, that um, opportunity to join the um, FAPI SIG as well the, is useful. So I hope people in the audience take you uh, up on that. The um, thanks for sticking to time as well. The um, we don't have any questions in the chat room. There's the slide deck. It's great to have the slide deck link. Um, the so the next stage might be things like you know the sandbox, the demo, that sort of stuff. I mean, so you've got plans for a sandbox um, mm -hmm. in, in the near future. Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So then for that might be one way people could start getting involved um, in the special interest group would be, um, you know, as part of the feedback to, towards some of those sorts of things. Um, yes, great opportunities to be part of the security um, uh, API community. Um, okay, thanks. We'll have our next